So our next guy, Engelmann, he discovered that although we knew green was important, it was the green parts of the plants, that it wasn't just, you know, green or non-green that was important. Now remember, when we see a color, it's not the color that's being absorbed that we see. It's the color that's being reflected back at us that we see. So plants are green because they don't absorb green light, because green light is being reflected back at our eyes, and that's what we see. So Engelmann, he tried to figure out what colors of light are, is it that plants are absorbing? What colors of light are most important to plants? And he had a really cool experiment for this. So in this picture, that little white line that you see, that's actually the cells of very thin um, photosynthetic algae. So it does photosynthesis. And those little black dots you see, those are bacteria that like oxygen. So wherever the bacteria go, that's going to be the places that there's the most oxygen. So he put that photosynthetic algae under the light, and he did it under a rainbow light, like run through a prism. Like you guys might have uh, had one of those prisms in your car or your bedroom that reflect, turn the light into rainbows. We put it under a rainbow light, and the parts of the rainbow that made the plant do the most photosynthesis would attract the most bacteria. So you can look at that picture there, and you can see that these oxygen-loving bacteria gathered the most under the red light and a little bit more under the blue light. But there's practically no bacteria under the green and yellow light. So he figured out that the red and blue light were the best for producing oxygen, especially the red light. So now we know that for whatever reason, these two colors of light, red and blue, make photosynthesis happen in the most strong way and make the most oxygen. Well, this started a whole thing. Okay, oxygen, where is this oxygen coming from? Because going into the plant, we have carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has oxygen in it. We also have water going into the plant. Water has oxygen in it. It's H2O, CO2 has two oxygens, H2O has one oxygen. So we started having an argument with scientists. Some of them were like, oh, it's the oxygen from the water that comes out of the plant as O2, the oxygen we breathe. And then some people say, no, 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 it's the carbon dioxide. You just chop off the carbon, you're left with two oxygens, and that's how it happens. So our next slide, um, Martin Kamen, who actually died relatively recently, if you look on there. So this was, um, not too long ago, he actually won the Nobel Prize. Not so much for this work, because he is most famous for discovering the carbon dating, um, which is how we figure out how old, really old things are. But he liked to work with radioactive things. So carbon dating has to do with radioactive isotopes, and his experiment here has to do with radioactive isotopes. So what radioactive isotopes are, are a version of an element like oxygen that give off radioactivity. And that's really useful to us because we can track the radioactivity. It's like a little light bulb that we can track and we can see how it travels through a plant um, and see all the steps it goes through along the way because it gives off that radioactivity so we can detect it. So what he did is he made water that had radioactive oxygen in it, which we call oxygen 18. So we have this radioactive water and he watered his plants with radioactive water. So now he could see what happened after he watered his plants with radioactive water. Where did that oxygen go? Well, it turned out that when he watered his plants with radioactive water, he produced radioactive oxygen gas. You probably don't want to breathe in that room because I'm not sure how good for, for you it is to breathe radioactive oxygen. But that solved the problem. Now we know that it, the oxygen that we breathe comes from the water that we give to our plants. That, you know, that ended that argument. He actually did a separate experiment that he gave the plants radioactive carbon dioxide, and it turns out that radioactive oxygen went into the sugar. So the carbon dioxide is what gets hooked together into sugar in photosynthesis, and it's the water that makes the oxygen that we breathe. And like I said, his big thing was that he uh, discovered carbon dating. But I'd say that photosynthesis is pretty important too. 
All right, and our last one, our last guy, Melvin Calvin. Now, he won the Nobel Prize for this discovery. And this is really the super details. So I said that the carbon dioxide was what makes sugar, but we didn't know how. Now you don't need to know all the steps of this cycle, but you can see that carbon gets, goes through lots and lots of different small steps to get squished together into a sugar. And he figured out every single one of those steps using radioactive carbon. And that was a huge discovery. The thing is he didn't do it alone. He actually did it with two other people, especially one guy named Benson. But when he got the Nobel Prize, Benson didn't get the Nobel Prize, so he got kind of screwed over. So lots of people call it the Calvin cycle. Some people call it the Calvin-Benson cycle, you know, trying to give Benson some credit. But unfortunately, you know, not life isn't fair sometimes. So Calvin kind of won out on that one. But now we know exactly what steps carbon dioxide has to go through to get squished together into sugar. So you can see, we. These are all the major discoveries in photosynthesis. I've left some out that definitely are not the only people. But it's a very complicated process to actually figure out something as big as photosynthesis. So science doesn't happen all at once. Every scientist just adds a little piece of knowledge to the whole tapestry of what we know about the world. And so what we teach you in class, this is what we've figured out, and hundreds of people have figured out over hundreds of years, or even thousands of people. And I just want you guys to know that so that you don't think that, you know, everybody just wakes up one day and makes crazy giant discoveries and figures out complicated things all by themselves. It takes a lot of people, a lot of time, and a lot of effort to do that. All right. Thank you very much.